Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about cardiac tamponade. What is cardiac tamponade? Cardiac tamponade is an emergency life threatening condition that results from rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac. So, cardiac tamponade is an emergency life threatening condition results from rapid accumulation results from rapid accumulation of fluid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac okay so this is a emergency the excess pericardial fluid prevents the atria the excess pericardial fluid prevents the diastolic diastolic filling of the atria and the ventricles okay there is excessive pericardial fluid that prevent the atrial ventricle from filling adequately during diastole which decreases the volume of blood which decreases the volume of blood okay which decreases the volume of blood available during system during system okay so what happens producing hemodynamic compromise it produces hemodynamic compromise dynamic compromise so we got the definition of cardiac tamponade this is an emergency situation, life-threatening condition due to rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac that prevent the diastolic filling of the atria and ventricles. If there is decreased filling during diastole, there will be decreased stroke volume. So there will be decreased blood available during system producing hemodynamic compromise. So there is the definition of the cardiac tamponade. So to find out some of the anatomy related to cardiac tamponade. So our heart is like that heart. It has the atria ventricle, atria and the ventricles. This is the left ventricle, right ventricle, left atria, right atria, okay. 
So it receives the superior vena cava, receives the inferior vena cava, SVC, IVC, okay, and this will be blood will be collected in the right atrium that would go to the right ventricle to the tricuspid valve from the right ventricle blood should come out through the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary trunk okay so we get the pulmonary trunk so it will go to the lung after after it is oxygenated blood will return back to the left atria by means of four pulmonary veins okay from left atria blood will go to the left ventricle through the mitral valve okay we have the mitral valve here is our tricuspid valve okay we have here the tricuspid valve so this is the way blood is collected and blood is going to the lung and from the lung blood is oxygenated returned back by the pulmonary veins going to the left atria then left ventricle then from left ventricle blood come out through the aorta through the aorta okay so if there is less collection of blood by the superior vena cava to the right atria less amount of blood will go to the right ventricle from right ventricle less amount of blood will go to the pulmonary trunk pulmonary artery to the lungs and then small amount of blood will return to the left atrium through the pulmonary veins so left ventricle will get minimum amount of blood or less amount of blood so the stroke volume will be decreased so that is the way and our heart is inside a fibrous sac that is the pericardium suppose this is the pericardium pericardium fibrous tissue is blended with the tunica adventitia of the blood vessels like the ascending aorta ascending aorta the superior vena cava the fibrous pericardium is blended with the tunica adventitia of the blood vessels root of the blood vessels and this is a closed sac it only contains around 20 to 30 ml of serous fluid okay that help the heart to go through systole diastole without any problem okay but if there is a rapid accumulation of fluid then there will be collection of blood between the heart and the pericardial sac and that that excessive fluid will will press on the heart heart cannot expand during diastole okay so there is the idea so we have the we have the we have the pericardial sac pericardial sac and in case of cardiac tamponet we have a lot of we have a lot of collection of fluid in the pericardial sac we get fluid in the pericardial sac due to rapid accumulation that will press on the heart wall that will press on the heart wall that will press on the heart wall so because this is an abnormal situation and this is the pericardium pericardium it is the fibrous pericardium okay this is composed of fibrous tissue with minimum amount or no elastic tissue so it cannot accommodate this excess amount of fluid it cannot expand very quickly so there will be collection of fluid here that fluid will press on the heart chamber okay that is the idea of the cardiac tamponet okay so there will be there will be compression on the wall of the of the heart we know that heart is a hollow muscular organ so there is if there is any excessive collection of fluid in the pericardial cavity that will compress the heart chambers 
and heart wall is composed of myocardial tissue that is present in all four chambers. The left ventricle wall is very thick. Right ventricle is less thick than that of the left ventricle. Atrial, atrial wall is even thinner than that of the ventricle. Right atrial wall is very thin, very thin. So if there is collection of fluid, then this part, right side of the heart will be compressed more. So this will compress the heart, heart will be compressed like this way. So less amount of blood will be collected to the right atrium than to the right ventricle because of excessive collection of fluid here. Okay, so that will compress the right atrium, right ventricle. Okay, even it, it attempt to compress the left ventricle and left atrium because the pericardial cavity is a closed sac. Okay, so that is the pathogenesis of the of the cardiac tamponade. Okay, now what are the causes of cardiac tampon? Causes, if you go to the causes. Okay. What are the causes? One important cause is penetrating trauma to the chest wall, penetrating trauma trauma to the fibrous pericardium to the fibrous pericardium okay this one then there may be rupture of the ventricular wall after myocardial infarction okay so rupture of of ventricular wall wall following myocardial infarction myocardial infraction okay or mi then we may have rupture of the aortic aneurysm, rupture of aortic aneurysm, or rupture of the blood vessel, rupture of the heart due to subacute bacterial endocarditis, rupture of the heart wall. due to subacute bacterial endocarditis subacute bacterial endocarditis endocarditis okay. that that may be a possibility so we got that so it may be due to complication of complication of open heart surgery okay. there are many causes there is the collection of fluid here it may be a complication of lung cancer complication of lung cancer or any other cause of malignant pericardial effusion okay extensive pericardial effusion so these are the causes of cardiac tamponade okay these are few causes we have many other causes of the cardiac tamponade. Okay. Now we go to the differential diagnosis. Okay. What are the differential diagnosis? Differential diagnosis of cardiac tamponade. 
differential diagnosis okay it may mimic that of the pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism constrictive pericarditis restrictive cardiomyopathy okay so we got the pulmonary embolism constrictive pericarditis restrictive cardiomyopathy and it might, might be the our dd may be the heart failure maybe by ventricular heart failure heart failure so these are the possible maybe more than that differential diagnosis okay now what are the physical finding what we expect in a patient with cardiac tamponade physical findings okay we'll get the Bex triad Bex okay what is that Bex triad that is hypotension hypotension why hypotension because of less stroke volume why less stroke volume because according to Frank Starling, Frank Starling law the stroke volume depends on the collection of blood if there is more collection of blood more force of contraction more stroke volume so there will be hypotension as because the right atria right ventricle is compressed so lack of filling of blood by the superior vena cava inferior vena cava to the right atria then to the right ventricle so there will be less amount of blood collection okay that will lead to hypotension this is very important then distended neck okay distended neck veins neck veins why this happen because neck veins especially the subclavian vein is tributaries the brachiocephalic veins they all collect blood blood go to the superior vena cava to the right atrium also right atrium also get blood from the inferior vena cava so in the neck region this it go, go to the superior vena cava if the superior vena cava is compressed right atrium is compressed so there will be stagnation of blood in the head and neck region there will be engorgement of the blood vessel in the head and neck region so there will be distended neck vein okay we will get muffled or obscured muffled heart sound muffled heart sound because it is surrounded by the fluid okay so that fluid may be blood in case of hemopericardium it may be some type may be passed the pyopericardium okay it may be just serous fluid depending on the pathology okay these are the three components of the Bex triad okay what else we'll get we'll get the pulses paradoxes pulses paradoxes okay there will be decrease in the in the pulse volume during inspiration and that should be more than 10 millimeter of mercury the pressure there yeah, the, there will be low pressure pulse during inspiration more than 10 millimeter of mercury okay we get the elevated jugular vein we just discussed that part elevated jugular pressure jugular pressure we'll see changes in the x and y descent y descent will be lost 
there. Okay, so you get the elevated jugular venous pressure. Okay, so these are the physical findings. Pulse volume should be decreased. Okay, we got the physical findings here. Patient will complain of dyspnea, difficulty in breathing, dyspnea, and difficulty in breathing. There may be chest pain, chest pain because of lack of blood flow through the coronary arteries that may lead to ischemic problem in the in the heart so there may be chest pain but usually there is dyspnea because lack of oxygen to the to the body okay then we got the signs symptoms now go to the diagnostic test okay what are the diagnostic test diagnosis Okay, diagnosis by means of echocardiography. Okay, we can do chest x ray. The chest x ray, what we get? We get large cardiac silhouette. Large cardiac silhouette. Take the ECG or EKG. What we see? We see low. We may, may see low QRS, low QRS complex, and we may get flattening of flattening of T waves, and we get most important elliptical alternance. Electrical, we may get this, may get that, but it is important. Electrical alternance, okay. We we'll get electrical alternance. So, these are the diagnostic procedure. We we'll give exercise in echocardiography, electrical alternance, okay. We may chest x ray, get large cardiac silhouette. Okay, silhouette. Okay, so we got that. That is the diagnosis, the management. Management should be done in emergency department by emergency medical doctors. Okay, that is done by means of pericardiocentesis. Okay. It should be done very quickly. Pericardio sentences. And you must know there is contraindication for diuretic therapy, but we can use dopamine, not the diuretic. But this is most important pericardio sentences. So that's all about the cardiac tamponade. If you like my video, please support my channel. Please subscribe me. Have a nice day. Bye now.